46.6281. The speed is equal to my wavelength, 0.915 times my frequency. We'll be within 20% error. So the math problem is 46.6281 divided by 0.915. 50.96 Units? Parts? Yep. That's not what I've done. Ideally it's 60 hertz, but again, we just did one trial. Questions to hear. I think this covers about a third of the faster set problems. All right. Let's just take a small little break, stretch legs, and uh, I'll set up for the one fixed, one free end, and we'll see how close we can get to figuring out the speed of sound. So we're now going to be dealing with one fixed, one free end. So this will be the free end up here, this will be the fixed end down here, and we just need a tuning fork or a black twist that has power. Now, if you're ever dealing with a tuning fork, please don't bang it on metal as much as you can. Yes, you get a really nice sound that way, but you start to do damage to the tuning forks. And so that's why we have these right here. I'm assuming all of you can hear that. Now, as I put it over here, what's happening is that this is vibrating back and forth. The tuning fork is vibrating back and forth and basically creating compression and rarefaction and sending those waves down to the bottom. They'll hit the water down here. It's a fixed end from the sound point of view. It will flip, come back up and interfere with itself. So let's talk a little bit about what it will look like in our nice ideal and then we'll see how well it actually works. So one fixed, one proof. So the simplest pattern we can have, fixed end is going to be a node, a free end will be an anti-node. So the simplest pattern is that. We got the wide oscillation right here. From a sound point of view, this would be, you've got a much larger amplitude here than here, and so this will mean, this will be loud. And you'll notice when we do that, that as the water level changes, that there'll be certain points where it's a lot louder than others. So first off, how many waves is this? A quarter. What'd you say? One quarter. It is. Because remember, a full wave is this. So a quarter wave would be, if I'm going from a node to the first anti-node, it's just a quarter of the wave. So L, if L is this distance here, L is equal to a quarter of the wavelength. The next simplest one, first harmonic, badly drawn. I'm going to try that one more time, and they might still look the same. But. It's 
slightly better. Again, that distance L. How many ways is this? A three quarters? It is. Just like before, every time you go to the next one, you add a half of a wave. So this is three quarters of a wave. Now, unfortunately, this is not officially the second harmonic, although there's a good possibility I have some videos out there where I call it that. This technically is the third harmonic. Second harmonic really can't be produced. Would it be a half then? If it could? Say it again. Would it be a half if it could? The second one? Yeah, if, if it could. I'm not quite sure what that looks like, but. Wouldn't it just be? Um, from your it's head. Like... Oh, except that puts a note at both ends. And, and it has a free end. We have a free end. Uh, okay. That's the trouble with it. Oh. Basically, it's the third harmonic because it's three times this. Now, to sometimes offset the fact that we skipped the even harmonics, they came up with a different word for this. This is also called the first overtone. Textbook doesn't do that. I don't use overtone a whole lot, but uh, it is sometimes called the first overtone. And then the next one would be the second overtone or the fifth harmonic. Why isn't the first harmonic an overtone? Because uh, that's the that's the basis. It's not over anything. I guess if using that nomenclature, although I don't think people do, but it would be the I guess the first tone. Okay. The next one. So we have our fifth harmonic. Check. Or the second over fifth. How many ways is this? One, One and a quarter. One and a quarter, yep. So five fourths, or if you like decimals, 1.25. Well, even if you don't like decimals, it's still 1.25. Right there. So let's see if we can actually predict where the first harmonic is going to land. The frequency of this is 512 hertz. So unlike before, this time we're going to use the frequency, so 512 hertz. Apparently it is the note C. So from this, we should be able to predict the wavelength because, well, what is the speed of sound? What is the speed of sound? It's the... I didn't write it down. No, that's speed of light. Does it tell you any other information? Meters per second. Okay, does it tell you any other information? No. The fact that it changes, right? With? With humidity and temperature. Yes. Oh, I'm so good. <laughs> that's why I was like 343 meters per second. It didn't know if it told you a temperature. Okay. So, there is a formula uh, that I can I can remember parts of, which doesn't really help. Somewhere around 340 uh, on tests. In theory, I will give that to you. If you don't, yeah. You know, if I don't, just ask. I've had other students just sort of use the number that they happen to remember. If I did not give it, 343 is about right. We it's should not have a huge impact if I'm off by three meters per second. All right, so I know that the 
speed is frequency times the wavelength. So 343 is equal to 512 times the wavelength. And therefore the wavelength will be, well obviously 343, 512ths. I guess we'll be helpful though. 0.5699? Uh, 6699. 6699. 6699. Units? Like the meter. I think you said it. Yeah. Yeah. I heard correctly. Sometimes I do. So the first harmonic should happen at a quarter of that. So if I do one quarter times 0 0.6699, 0.16 something, Point one six seven four seven five meters. Which means that roughly 16, 17 centimeters from the top here, it should be the harmonic. Now, there's something really strange about these, and I haven't figured it out. I, I thought I actually figured it out at one point, but no. All the water tubes have a measuring tape on the side, which is good. And they all start, zero is two centimeters from the top. I thought that was offsetting something, but it, actually comes out relatively decent if you just add two centimeters to whatever you have on the measuring tape here. And you can sort of do away with uh, any issues there by doing a plot and looking at the slope. But, so what will it sound like? Well, at the first harmonic, that means I've got an anti-node right there at the top, and so it should be louder than other moments. So the way that we will adjust it is by changing the level of water. Now the level of water in the reservoir here should match the level of water in here. And so I can adjust the level of the water just by raising this or lowering it and it'll come back down. Now it's really helpful to be able to, to not have to hold this the entire time. So the good side is they gave me this. The bad, bad thing about this is that it's quite possible that when I lift this, I'm gonna scrape metal on metal. Such a lovely sound. Yeah. Ooh, that was better than I usually do. I guess there's enough dirt and grime on this to offset some of that. Uh, I need this up to here, and so two things. One, I probably need more water in here, and also I'm gonna to need to raise this. So first, the water. Now, this is a lot more full. So you can see the water level is rising up there along with some bubbles, and who knows what that other stuff in there is. <laughs> Fortunately, the sound we care about is the sound traveling in the air, not the sound traveling in the water. So the, the flotsam that's in the water right here, whatever it is, uh, it should not affect the results. So that's roughly where I need it to be, so I'm gonna lift it. That. I'm gonna drop. That. Now, if we started going for the next harmonic, which we will, we do run into trouble of if we drop this down low enough, this will overflow. And so it's helpful when you're doing this experiment to have something to dump excess water into. I do have these containers here. Sometimes a trash can is useful, and sometimes it's just useful to have paper towels to clean up the mess. All right, so there's my 512. This up here is designed in order to hold it. I find you get slightly better results if the sort of the main plane that the two tongue two prongs are on is going vertically. Get 
hear it a little bit louder just then? Mm -hmm. Somewhere around there. All right. So it is at about 13.8 centimeters. On. Oh, that that you could never, never, never again. But I will try it again at some point. <laughs> or try it for the first time. Caught it on camera and everything. <laughs> All right, so 13.8 centimeters, but you need to add the two centimeters from the top. So 15.8 centimeters. Our prediction was 16.7 centimeters. So we're just a little bit off there. We're off by a, a centimeter. And it puts us closer than our last demonstration. Mm -hmm. But within 20%. And again, this is why you do several of them, just to try to find the, the offset being a little bit off one way and a little bit off another way. Let's see if we can get the next harmonic without spilling water everywhere. So the next harmonic happens at three quarters of the wavelength or three times the first wavelength. So the second harmonic would be three quarters of 0.6699 meters. And so the next harmonic should happen when it is, let's see, so 50, and then subtract that to this point. So it should be somewhere around here. So would it be quiet and then loud and then quiet? Yes. Okay. And, and then loud again. And then what? Loud again. Loud again at the end. Oh, when we get to the next harmonic? The third yes. harmonic. Well, the first harmonic's up there. We're already past that. Yeah, the third. It should, she was saying, shouldn't it be quiet, loud, quiet, loud? Oh, if we started from the very top, it would be loud for the first harmonic, then quiet again, and then loud for the second harmonic, quiet again, loud for the third harmonic. Okay. But part of the trouble is when doing the slab, the farther, the greater the harmonic is, the quieter the loud is. And if you're doing this in a room full of people all doing it, I find it very hard to differentiate some of the, some of the experiments going on. It's, my fingernail was working better than that. Except then. It, it actually got quite louder slightly there. I'm assuming you can hear that better than I can. However, mm -hmm. is, is this happening somewhere around where my finger is? So it seems to get louder at about 47.6 centimeters plus add the two, so 49.6 centimeters. That was our prediction, experimentally 0.496 meters. So we're off, we are a lot closer than we were the first time. And what is the two again? Why are we adding two? Because the first number, the 47.6 is the number that's on the metric tape right here, mm -hmm. but there's two centimeters at the top. Okay. That's where that's coming from. Sorry about that. So there seems to be some legitimacy to the stuff that we're talking about here. Questions? All right. The next one does not require any prep because the next one is two free ends. And we just happen to have a device with two free ends. That's the first harmonic, oh sorry, that's the second harmonic actually. Third, fourth, fifth, and I think the 
a little bit of a six there, it's hard to tell. But we are going to predict what those are going to be and then figure out how close we get. Cool. Two free ends. Yeah. I don't know why I capitalized ends and not free, but <laughs> a free end is an anti-node, and so the simplest version we can have here is we have an anti-node at one end and an anti-node at the other end. That's the simplest one. And how many waves is that? One. All right, one half. Yeah, it's half a wave. Again, the full wave looks like that. And what we've done is just chopped off the ends there. So if this is L, that is a half of a wave, or the wavelength is just 2L. Just as before, we're going to add a half wavelength every single time. So in theory, if I was, when I said we had the second harmonic there, it should have been incredibly quiet at, you know, there should have been two points inside where it should have been very quiet. Unfortunately, if we had anything in here in order to test that, it would disrupt the waves and we can, we would not be testing what we thought we were testing. So there's a certain amount of faith that we have on that. How many waves? It is the second harmonic. It's twice what the first one was. The next one will be three halves, or the third, the third harmonic will be three halves. Oops, that should have been a lambda there. So L is equal to lambda, or lambda equals L. And then add a half wave every time. The three halves of the wavelength, or the wavelength is two thirds. 